So welcome Melody. We are joined by Melody this afternoon, uh, Melody Cheel, who is presenting at the NLP International Conference next year. Lovely to see you, Melody. Lovely to see you as well. Thank you so much for inviting me for this chat. It's, it's, you're more than welcome and it's lovely. We're, we're obviously getting close to Christmas as we can see, but... Um... <laughs> well, I thought I'd decorate. I did that especially. So I, I thought we get in the festive spirit. I'm wearing red. You know, what, what more can we do? I haven't, I haven't got my tinsel up there yet. I'm working on it. <laughs> so anyway, Melody, you are presenting at the conference next year and your topic is the power of group supervision. Um, the very fact it's got power in the title is exciting. So uh, do tell me a bit more about yourself and your presentation. Of course. Yes. Um, well, I'm an NLP master trainer. However, I also train people to be coaches and run accredited training coaches as well as my accredited NLP. And quite a long time ago now, I became very, very um, attached to the idea that we need more supervision in NLP. And I think it's worth me saying what supervision is as well, because I think sometimes people misunderstand it and think yeah, it's yeah. like a manager or someone yeah. uh, controlling another person. And of course, coaching took uh, modeled supervision from therapy and from social work right. so it's basically having a person who can assist professionals to ensure that a they're getting the kind of support they need so if they're struggling or they need some help or they need some feedback or they need some development it's there but it's very much um, ad hoc because these are for, this is for really people who've already got the training or maybe who are going through the training. Mm. It's also to make sure they're keeping ethical. And people don't always realize that that's part of the job of a supervisor is listening to what the NLP practitioner or the coach is doing and just checking, is what they're doing okay? Mm. Because of course, particularly new practitioners sometimes make mistakes. And one of the biggest ones that, that I see students doing, uh, particularly with new students, is taking on something that's way outside their scope, yeah. that maybe is you know, really serious, a therapy issue. And it's usually because they don't want to let the other person down and they're really, the positive intentions there all the way. However, it's pretty risky and it's risky and dangerous for the client as well, not just for the NLP practitioner. So that's another element of it is, is the taking care of the um, ethics side of things mm -hmm. as well. And also a, a level of mentoring too, to, to help people. So there's, there's a number of different aspects to the coaching relationship. And one that's often overlooked is that um, practitioners and coaches are sole workers. Mm. And it means they don't have anyone telling them they're doing a good job. Mm. So the other thing that we do, uh, that, that, and this, for me, this is so key to this, is that it gives people somewhere to come where someone can say, you did a really good job. Well yeah. done. Yeah. And obviously that level of, um, we call it in TA stroking, is essential for the soul, soul worker to keep them motivated, to keep them happy. And, and I'm guessing as well, I mean, I, I know a fair bit about supervision um, and, and have had a supervisor um, myself. Uh, and, and, and part of it is that sort of sanity check, isn't it, sometimes? So is, is, is that the right, and as you say, not, not just about scope of practice, but also is that the right way to approach this particular challenge that this particular client appears to be having and, and that sort of thing? Um, is sure. all part of it. Sure. Yeah. yeah, so it can be a, so it can be a sounding board where someone's actually got a, a clue about what they think they might do. Um, sometimes they come to me and say, I have no idea what to do, of course. Um, but there's also that other aspect within there of um, when someone's own stuff is being triggered, when we've got mm. transfers, counter transference. And very often when that happens, the person is out of awareness of it. Mm. So the supervisor may well be the person who asks the question that allows them to get that perspective and realize, oh, hang on a minute, I'm playing out one of my own patterns here. Yeah. Um, and, or I've got sucked into one of the client's patterns. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, if that's stepping away, it's that moving outside yeah. of the system to, yeah. to look at it a different way. Yeah. And the reason I talk about the power of group supervision is there is a power in groups. Yes. And, and I think the one-to-one -one dynamic is actually really useful. And even more useful is a group. 
Yeah. Now, obviously, it needs to be a small enough group that people can have a sense of relationship and connection with one another. But there is that experience uh, of observing someone else sharing what's going on for them and having some supervision and having your own pennies drop <laughs> and then think well I haven't brought that to supervision but actually this really relates to me as well so it really um, expands the field of learning massively um, and and the way when I run a group um, what we tend to do is we have rounds so okay. there'll be an ind- there'll be one-to-one with me um, and then we have what's called a process review, which is the which is a group discussion afterwards. And what we're doing in that is I'm really clear on the contracting that we're not saying what you think the other person should be doing. Mm-hmm. But it's about what did it stimulate in you? What mm-hmm. did it remind you of? Or it can be a technical question about some kind of theory. And I also invite my um, students and my people being supervised to actually discuss what they think I was doing. Mm. So, um, because of course I'm an NLP supervisor I'm not just a coaching supervisor one of the things that that is um, used in supervision is sometimes to model yeah the change you're trying you're you're working with the client uh, the coach the coach or practitioner with and using NLP we can do this in a very Miltonian way as yeah. well yeah. and yeah. Uh, it's really useful for people in the observation in the meta position to start saying I can see what's happening here Yes. And although they're kind of unpacking what I'm saying and what I'm doing, that deepens the learning again, because, of course, they can be doing that with their clients. Yes. So it's actually helping that Milton part of it kind of really go all the way through yeah. and, and go much, much deeper. So, um, I mean, a common thing is where I may have noticed there is a what's called a parallel process happening. And this is where something that's happening in the client's world is being paralleled in the practitioner's world. Yes. So, so the dynamic they're experiencing with their um, client, they they recreate with me. So an example could be, uh, I've got this client and they keep going off on tangents and I can't seem to pull them back on, <laughs> on track. And then the coach proceeds to go off on tangents. <laughs> And one way to deal with it is to do an overt intervention of saying, have you noticed you're doing the same thing as your client? Another is to actually demonstrate how to handle it. Right. And then to and then to unpack it later. Mm. So, so it's another another way of working with the same thing. Beautiful. So, I mean, what, what will delegates take away from your session, Melody? Well, one of the things I'm going to be doing in the conference session is actually sharing um, a development I've made on um, a very well-known coaching supervision model called the seven-eyed model. Mm. And I've, I've NLP'd it. Wonderful. So, um, so first thing is they're going to have an experience. They're going to have an experience of doing that. And we're going to do some work together as a group. And, that, and how we do that will partly depend on how many people show up. Because yeah. I think we had some quite big groups last time. Yes. So I may actually have people working in little smaller groups um, to work with this and to st- actually get some kind of an experience of this so that they can get some sense of how this all works. And I'm even um, hoping that some of my graduates from my supervision training will drop into the group <laughs> to actually um, be in those groups. So oh, yeah. that they can actually give a little bit more of that experience uh, of that too because that's mm. a, another way we can expand it. Absolutely. But yeah, so so some of it's going to be understanding a little bit more about what supervision is. That's going to be the main thing. So yeah. it's for people who, uh, so on the one level, people who are uh, practitioners who've never, ever experienced supervision, it'll be a way to get a get a little taste of it. And yeah. obviously there's lots of different ways we can do it. But also for experienced people. Yes. It, uh, so experienced people can come in and experience um, the NLP version of the seven eyed model. And maybe some of some people who are already supervising could come in and, and, and experience it, too, with view mm. to do it themselves. So so it can be on a number of levels, which, of course, is how supervision operates as well. But it's on a number of levels. And the group dynamic, of course, is, you know, given that that's the topic is group supervision, the group dynamic of that will be um, particularly valuable. And of course, anybody, anybody who wants their gold standards for um, NLP professional standards, they, they supervision is a requirement of that. So, um, so there you go. 
Absolutely. And, and quite honestly, it's a hobby horse of mine. So I was really pleased to see it in the gold standard, um, particularly when I think it was a year or so ago now we had the uh, official body that recognized NLP practitioners as a profession. Yeah. Uh, I think they were reviewing all the different professions out there. I've written down the name of it because it's so, so difficult to remember. It's the Standard Occupation Classification Extension Project. Well um, done. <laughs> amazing stuff. I could only do it from reading it. So, so it's yes. quite a long one. But what that gives us is that that now is out there, NLP practitioner as a profession. Yeah. Now, of course, people go on NLP, NLP practitioner training and other tra NLP trainings for a multitude of reasons. Some people go on it really for personal development or maybe just to use the techniques for influencing and communication in their day job. They don't necessarily need supervision, but it's those people that are wanting to work one to one yeah. with clients or run small workshops as an NLP practitioner or master practitioner. They're the ones that really need to be considering getting involved in supervision if they're not already, because it's a, it, as you say, it's the gold standard. It demonstrates professionalism. Yes. And if we have clients starting to get educated which they are starting to in coaching yes yes clients are starting to ask coaches are you in supervision mm. and they're going to start mapping that across to nlp practitioners pretty quickly mm. and to be able to answer congruently yes i'm in supervision it's something i take really seriously that's really going to make a difference from the professional point of view and also unfortunately when we sometimes get negative press it yes. allows us to have a good solid professional counter to it yes yeah and for all sorts of things like insurance and all that sort of thing as yeah. well it's all um it's all it's all about risk nowadays isn't it mitigating yeah. risk especially I think since the pandemic where um uh, yeah. where a lot of people experienced having risk mitigation in all sorts of ways that they didn't expect <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. And I'm guessing the insurance companies, once they, they work out about supervision, it will eventually become a requirement mm. um, for, for anyone who's wanting to practice. Yeah. Um, so these, these kind of things, they, they, they eventually come into um, some kind of regulation, even if we're not a regulated field, it'll be the insurance companies that regulate yeah. Yeah, we've often said that, haven't we? It's the insurers that drive things rather than um, exactly. rather other areas. <laughs> So is there anything that delegates can do beforehand to give them a deeper experience of your session? Um, well, one of the things that uh, when in order to prepare for the session, first of all, that's how I process that person, mm. <laughs> just suddenly realised, um, it's actually worth people bringing some case studies with them. OK. Uh, so actually bringing with them some um, coaching sessions. They can be sessions that are current. Mm -hmm. They can be historical. They can be ones that went well. They could be ones that didn't go well. They could be ones where they would like some inspiration. Um, the one thing I, I would say we need to be really clear about is they need to anonymize yeah. uh, the cases because obviously we can't guarantee that it, who's going to who's going to listen to it because we're at a conference. Yes. So uh, so for that purpose is please anonymize. But it's relatively easy to do that. So mm -hmm. so so taking off names, taking off company names if it's business. Yes. Uh, work. Um, so anything that would identify the person is the, is the main yes. thing to do. Yes. And those will really be shared in small groups anyway. So I will, um, um, although there may be one or two that do stuff with me, of course, in, in the main group. Mm -hmm. So I will ask people to, to be confidential with that. So that would be one thing to do. Um, in order to prepare, well, it may be if you've never experienced supervision to seek out some supervision. <laughs> that, could, that could be a good thing to do and uh, and I'm pleased to say um, there are now eight new supervisors out there um, from from the accredited training um, so we have some NLP accredited supervisors now which is brand new we haven't had that before and of course they're going to they're NLP trainers in in the main although a couple of them are NLP master practitioners so yeah. Yeah, because people don't need to be a trainer to be a supervisor. It's a different yes. discipline, really. It, absolutely. Yes. So although a trainer can be a supervisor, uh, a master practitioner can very easily be a supervisor if they're an experienced um, coach. Yes, definitely. definitely. Super. So so next year's conference, like this year's, was um, it is in a virtual environment. So how are you planning on adding value in the virtual environment? You've already mentioned breakout rooms, smaller groups. Yeah. 
Well, well, I've been working uh, in this virtual world uh, over the last couple of years, and I've actually found it relatively um, painless in the end. And actually, one of the things that's really important to me is that we still keep the energy going. We still keep the connection going. Um, Luckily, last year it worked really well, but most people uh, agreed to the fact that I really asked people to keep their cameras on and for us to really engage properly. And I try and keep it as interactive as I can so that it has a feel of us being in the room together. Mm. That I think is what makes the difference so that we can actually feel like we really are connecting um, no matter where we are, you know, mm. across the world uh as, as part of that as well but yeah i mean i think i've, I've learned so many lessons over the last couple of years about how to deliver this stuff now and in fact I've, we've actually even added that in into our nlp trainers training is how to keep people engaged keep people's attention and actually keep it going yeah because because it is a different kind of medium the energy has to be kind of here where yes. we're, we're, we've got the energy between us and where in, when we're doing face to face we might be walking around the room and putting on <laughs> yeah, can't do that anymore <laughs> things although actually joe's got his studio set up so he walks around quite a lot more however he's kind of caged yeah <laughs> so, so we've, we're caged by the edge of the camera yeah. uh, to some degree as well so it, it does mean we've got to have a different approach to it but it certainly is about keeping that sort of passion going so that we can really connect at a deeper level and that's important to me yeah definitely it, yeah this last couple of years has been a bit of a learning curve hasn't it it has and I think one of the things that's great about supervision actually it does work really well yes. on um, on this kind of virtual world yes uh, no I so used to have, I used to have a, a supervisor and um and all our all our sessions were um virtual even even way back then yeah. um but yes it, it's kind of revolutionized the the groups i run regularly because i run i run groups mm. um, and i'm actually just starting up a whole load of specialty ones coming into 2022 um because i only did it face to face uh before all of this madness began mm. um, and i probably wouldn't have chosen to go onto this format but we've said started, that haven't we yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the, my groups are oversubscribed all the time now Yeah. Um, because I've got people that live a long way away that wouldn't be able to access it otherwise. Yeah. Even people. I've got, uh, the, currently, I've, I've got people from Finland to Netherlands uh, within the workshops at the moment. And it's just really interesting how we can get that connection so quickly uh, working in that way. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So, I mean, Melody, you are a you are a staunch supporter of the conference. You've been a presenter um, many times. Um, and, and so what does the NLP International Conference mean to you? Well, it, it's always been for me a, a way of plugging into community uh, mm. as much as anything else. And one of the things I, I really enjoyed last time was um, the little slots we could have that were not presentation slots where we could just have chats with people and get together for a virtual coffee and all of that kind of stuff. And of course, I do hope we get to do some face to face ones in the future as well. But we seem to we seem to actually still be able to have that connection. And yes. maybe the, the I mean, I'm sure you've, you've thought you've, you've had this experience yourself that we're probably meeting people that may maybe wouldn't have managed to get here in person. Mm. So It has widened out the map so so to speak yeah. uh, so much so that even today i was working with someone i met at the nlp conference who's oh, an NLP, nlp trainer in pakistan who was having trouble getting hold of one of the coaching professional bodies and she'd been sending them emails and getting nothing back for about six months and so i did an email introducing her today and they responded immediately amazing so, and and so she was able to say oh thank you I've really, because she's trying to credit her co her courses with them as well yeah and so god knows what was happening so may, maybe there was a block on the emails because of the country she was coming from for some reason i don't know how these things work but because i did the i copied her in on it it managed to get it through and they're now talking to each other and mm -hmm. if i hadn't met her at the conference yeah you wouldn't have known to send me a message say saying help yes absolutely oh that's that's lovely that's good to hear good to hear so um so just to remind people watching um melody is presenting at the conference next year you're presenting on saturday the 21st of may um 11 o'clock bst because it'll be summertime by then um and it's a 90 minute session uh entitled the power of group supervision 
So um, looking forward to that. Thank you so much, Melody, for giving up time to have a chat this afternoon. Very much appreciate it. Thank well, you. thank you. I've enjoyed it as well. I'm looking forward to meeting everybody next year in May.